Welcome to The Weaver Sews. I'm Daryl Lancaster. It isn't unusual for a hand weaver to weave narrow fabric. Many looms just aren't wide enough for creating cloth that supports a pair of garment fronts or a full back. I've created a video on what to do when you don't have enough fabric and suggested a number of cheats to get what you need. Redesigning a pattern so that there are narrower pattern pieces is a great option. And in fact, any garment with lots of vertical seams is a perfect solution. This jacket has what we call princess seams. Princess seams are vertical seams that run either from the shoulder or armhole over the bust apex and down to the hem of the garment. In this case, they slip behind the pocket. They allow for more fine tuning of the bust shaping and can incorporate the fit and shaping of waist arts as well. So fit is a huge advantage of a princess seamed garment, but having the narrower panels of a front or back along with a side front or back allow for narrower fabric like I hand woven and a possible addition of a contrasting or coordinating fabric. I've mapped out the basic structure of the princess seam in my 200 jacket, which contains waist starts and a bust start, because the goal for me was to create panels that were as narrow as possible, I chose to design the princess seam conversion in my 200 jacket from the shoulder instead of the armhole. It is completely possible to make this seam come from the armhole instead of the shoulder, and I'll touch on that briefly later. To begin with, it is important to have already determined your size and traced off your size or combination of sizes from my pattern or whatever pattern you decide to use. I've covered some pattern alterations and how to select your size or combination of sizes in previous videos, so check them out if you are unsure. My 200 jacket has clear lines to help you make the conversion to princess seams. I'll be tracing the front of my 200 jacket pattern using the size blue. Trace the blue cutting line around the perimeter of the pattern, copying all markings, dots, and darts. In addition, there is a line that gracefully arcs up from the dart point of the waist dart over the bust apex to the midpoint of the shoulder. You can choose a different shoulder position than the center, but if you want to make sure that the princess seam in the front intersects with the princess seam in the back at the shoulder line, make sure that any changes you make are reflected in the back. Before we start cutting apart the pattern, we need to do two things. The first is to create match points to help sew the princess seam back together. Pick a spot about six inches or 15 centimeters above the waist dart point and create a perpendicular line across what will be the princess seam line. Drop down and draw a perpendicular line through the set of dots or markings in the waist dart directly below the waist dart point. Eliminate the other dots or markings from the waist dart as they won't be used. The second task is to replicate the grain line in what will become the side front pattern section. If you traced your pattern with a dotted or gridded pattern tracing medium and you placed the center front or grain line along a row of dots, then this part is easy. Just pick a parallel row of dots 
on what will be the side front section and draw in the grain line. If you are using a tracing medium that does not have a grid or dot system, just measure over from the grain line equal amounts to create a parallel grain line in what will be the side front. To create the center front pattern piece, cut through the leg of the dart closest to the center front of the jacket through the waist dart point and then continue on the traced line up and through the shoulder. You now have two pattern pieces. One will become the center front and one will become the side front. The original jacket pattern had 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance on the front edge and the shoulder. I've gone ahead and drawn them in so you won't be confused. We now have a center front pattern section but there is no seam allowance on the princess seam line. You'll need to add that. Here I've added 5 8 inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and I've also cleaned up the slight bauble in the princess seam line here. Note I no longer have the markings that indicate the waist dart. I've just kept the two markings above and below the bust point that will match up to the side front once we finish that. Now let's look at the side front. Trim away the remainder of the waist dart. This next step will create the side front shaping by eliminating the bust dart. Since the dart doesn't extend to the bust point, we will draw a line through the dart point to the princess seam line Following the center line of the dart, this line is indicated on the pattern. So just copy it. Cut along one leg of the dart through the end of the dart along the line you added to but not through the seam line for the princess seam. Leave a little hinge. Carefully close up the dart by overlapping the tracing medium. You will lose a bit of shaping because the dart point didn't reach the seam line. So to accommodate this, I add some extra contouring to the bust area from the two seam line markings you created above and below the bust point. The amount here is somewhat subjective and the goal is to be able to have the bust curve from the side front ease into the center front between the marks. Start with a quarter inch or six millimeter to three eighths of an inch or one centimeter and blend into the rest of the seam line above and below the markings. Again, the original jacket pattern had seam allowance included on the shoulders, the armhole or arm's eye, and the side seam lines. You'll need to add 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to the princess seam line. The back is a little bit simpler. Start by tracing the gentle arc from the waist dart point to the shoulder, adding match points as in the front, and replicating the grain line in what will be the side back section. Cut the two sections apart, removing the waist dart as we did in the front to define each section. Add seam allowance to both sides of the princess seam, eliminating the waist dart markings except for the match points for the princess seam line. One more thing, 
I mentioned at the beginning of this video that a princess seam that originates from the armhole is possible using this pattern. Instead of following a line from the dart point of the waist dart to the shoulder, draw a pleasing curve over the bust point towards the single dot of the armhole or arm's eye seam line. In fact, this curve can extend to anywhere in the arm's eye. You get to play designer. Follow all the previously outlined steps, adding match points, replicating the grain line on the side front or side back section. These same steps would be duplicated for the back, creating center back and side back pattern pieces which will then be sewn back together with the princess seam terminating at the armhole or arm's eye instead of the shoulder. To stitch together the princess seam in the front, typically you'll have to ease the curve of the side front into the straight edge of the center front. In a lined jacket using commercial fabric, I'll show you how to ease a slightly larger area into a slightly smaller area. Now I've gone ahead and stay stitched the garment sections. You can see that stitching here in white. First, ease stitch two parallel rows of machine basting between the match points on the side front. We covered ease stitching when we did the video on sleeves. Using the longest stitch your machine can make, machine based along the seam line over the bust apex between the two match points on the side front, leaving long tails at either end. Create a second line of machine basting parallel to that first line, halfway between the seam line and the cutting line. On the center front section, stay stitch with normal stitching half an inch or 1.2 centimeters from the princess seam cutting line between the princess seam match points. Clip into the seam allowance between match points to allow the seam allowance to spread to accommodate the curved side front. If you're working with a handwoven fabric, there is little need to clip as a handwoven fabric will usually give enough to accommodate a larger curve. With right sides together, Pin the side front to the center front sections, matching the shoulder, the lower edge, and the two match points, easing the bust curve of the side front into the center front section. Stitch from the lower edge to the shoulder, taking care not to stretch the seam line if working against the grain. Typically, this seam would be pressed open. Whether you clip or not, this seam presents a problem when trying to create a seam finish since the typical Hong Kong seam finish, which we have covered in a previous video, would need to be pressed open and the inner curve of the center front doesn't release well with a restrictive seam finish. I have an answer to that dilemma. It's called a welt seam finish. Next time, I'll cover welt seams. They are terrific for unlined jackets with curved seam lines and nicely complement an unlined jacket with Hong Kong seam finishes. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.